Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the For the Property Investor podcast. And we're here back with the weekly news, as we are every week with, of course, Nick Bendel, the only person to bring the news. How are you, Nick? Oh, I'm going really, really well, Owen. Normally, I record from Sydney, but at the moment, I'm enjoying a working holiday at Surface Paradise. The weather is wonderful. I'm going running on the beach every morning. It's just so good to be here. I was going to say, you're looking refreshed and younger just as we speak, just by being there. Well, that that, that is very, very good. Uh, I'm glad you're telling me I, I'm looking younger. I'm going to test that out. I might go to a nightclub on the weekend and see if I get carded. Okay. Well, you're even sounding younger. I had to... Yeah, refresh my memory of what that actually meant. <laughs> well, I should point out, even when I was young, I didn't really go to nightclubs anyway because I'm a very boring person. Uh, now oh, that I'm older, you? I've become even more boring. Oh, right, yes. Well, I can't talk about my young life, otherwise I might be incriminating myself. So, In, in fact, do you want to hear a very brief true story? The very last time I went to a nightclub, I seem to recall it was in 2009, I did not want to be there, and I actually brought a book with me. <laughs> oh, Nick, stop it. <laughs> I haven't been clubbing since. <laughs> well, I don't blame you if you take a book to the club. Yeah, you might, you'd probably have trouble reading it. Yeah, I mean, when, when rappers talk about hitting the clubs till the break of day, why don't any of them also mention and reading books in those clubs? I, I actually, I think you're the only person I know that has ever taken a book to a nightclub. Quite possibly. I'll investigate and get back to you on that one. Yeah, yeah. Let's set up a survey. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Uh, we'll, we'll send it out to both of our databases and, and um, yeah, see what happens. Okay. I like that. But the good news is because I'm so boring, I'm always looking around for news and that's maybe why you selected me to be the person who brings the news for this wonderful podcast. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. When you were shortlisting <laughs> people, you crossed out anyone who seemed interesting and then you thought, I just need the most boring oh, I, person. I wouldn't go that far. It was, it was more about the positive aspects of you being able to bring the news. Okay. Well... Uh, we are going to have some very interesting news a little bit later, but, and I don't want to steal your thunder, is this the part where we talk about what we've done over the yes. past week? Yes. You, you, well, you just stole my thunder, Nick. Um, what, what's been happening in your week, Nick? Well, over the past week, and I, I've been at Surface for most of that week, so it's been a, a lovely week. Apart from running on the beach every morning, I, it, it was a good one for the business. I own a company called Hunter & Scribe, which is a copywriting agency that writes content for finance and property professionals. And over the past week, uh, we happened to land four new clients, three mortgage brokers and one non-bank lender, which was very nice. Very good. Wow. That's, um, that's pretty impressive all in one week. Yes, that's certainly more than usually happens in one week, uh, but I'm not complaining. Well, I'm glad to see everything's going well. But um, and, and for us, yeah, we, we've just been very busy in the last week, head down um, tail up and um, thankfully we have a new staff member starting today to um, help with all this uh, extra workload we've got so uh, looking forward to that um, but um, Nick the the suspense is killing me what what news have you brought us this week we've got three interesting stories and the first story is Survey finds more people want property prices to go down than up. Everybody's Home, which is a coalition of housing, homelessness and welfare organisations, has published research showing that most people want property prices to fall. According to a survey of 2,000 voters, which was conducted by professional polling firm Redbridge, 21% of respondents wanted prices to increase in the next five years, but 54% wanted prices to fall, and 28% of respondents with a mortgage 
wanted prices to increase in the next five years, but 44% wanted prices to fall. Now, I mean, I should point out the media release from Everybody's Home didn't say whether the 2,000 voters who were surveyed were a representative sample or whether they were asked neutral questions rather than leading questions. So we can't be certain of the legitimacy of the survey results. Mm. The survey also found that 84% of voters are worried about housing affordability for young Australians. Owen, oh, it does make sense that renters would want property prices to go down rather than up. However, this survey apparently found that more people with a mortgage want prices to go down than up. Does that sound plausible to you? Um, it's, oh, it's, it's possible. I don't know about plausible, but um, possible, yes. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, even I want, you know, um, housing affordability for, for young Australians. It, it's um, uh, for, for everyone, for every Australian. But, um, um, but that, that doesn't, you know, I'd also like to eat ice cream three times a day. It's, um, but that that's not necessarily good for my health and um, for the for housing to become cheaper. It isn't necessarily good for the overall economy. Um, so it's um, yeah, it's it's um, we need to ask better questions. Mm. Well, well, the survey also found that eighty four percent of voters are worried about housing affordability for young Australians. Does do that feel like an accurate number to you? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'd put myself in that eighty-four percent as well. It's um, yeah, we and not just young Australians, but all Australians. Mm, interestingly, you've kind of been in the industry longer than me. Of course, right now you've got Leafield, a, a national property management business. Before mm. that, you were a mortgage broker. I've been working mm. in the industry for about a dozen years. I, I have noticed during that time that housing affordability is one of those issues that seems to get a run in the media every few years or so before then fading into the background. But this time, it's been running, I would say, for a year now. The media conversation about housing affordability has lasted longer and has been more intense than any time I can remember. I'm wondering, do you think Australians are more concerned about housing affordability now than in the past? Um, no, you can dig up black and white footage from the... Um the 60s, I, I assume, um, where um, people were being interviewed, um, coming out of um, land release offices going, oh, this is ridiculous. You know, um, they expect us to pay how much for a piece of land? And it's just like, um, it, you know, it's... Um, and, and not that I'm, I'm disputing that it, it costs more now when you compare it to real wages and you know inflation from you know from the 60s and 70s and 80s um but it's um it's it's always going to be the case and uh where there'll be uh people who can't live where they want to be um and they need to look at other options so it's it's yeah, you're not going to get yourself into a house by sitting there complaining about um, not being able to afford one. Um, you know, it's the, the the biggest thing we see, especially now, is that there are properties for lease in areas where where prices are going down, but you can go a few suburbs um, over and see that there's. Um, a lack of supply and prices are going up. So if you're wanting to to find something that's more affordable, then you need to look for it and be willing to move. Whether that's whether you're renting or buying, yes, you need to be a lot more mobile. And I think we have as a as a country, as a nation, um, uh, become more mobile. Um, but um, we we. We need to do so even more. I'm very curious as to whether the, this research is accurate in terms of more voters want prices to go up than uh, more voters want prices to go down than up, and more mortgagees want prices to go down than up. The reason I mention that is two thirds of people own their home, one third rent, and I always assumed 
if you're in that two thirds, you wanted prices to go up. If you're in the one third, you wanted prices to go down. And two thirds of people have more votes than one third of people. So I always assumed politicians weren't serious about making housing more affordable because they didn't want to be known as the people who made prices go down for two thirds of voters. But if this research is to be believed, if if a majority of, of voters, including those with mortgages, do want prices to go down, then maybe politicians actually will start doing something about this issue. Yes, well, it's it's dumbfounding. Even to, I mean, I've been in the industry for twenty five years, and you you look at prices now, and you, you just go, geez, it's like how 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 are people going to be able to afford that? Um, mm. But people are, um, and it's um, there's there's a lot of money out out there in the economy, and people can afford these um, properties. And so it, it needs to be, so for, for everyone who can't, it, it's a matter of looking at how they can uh, and what they need to do and be patient, work hard and um, get to that point. And it's, it's not easy. You know, I've, I've had to do it myself several times over. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that needs to um, uh, be considered by people when they're um, out there looking for somewhere to live. Um, they need that flexibility. Um, they need to be flexible um, to be able to uh, look at moving where they can afford to just to get in the market because it's, it's not timing the market it's time in the market so the best time to buy is when you can afford to and um, the second best time is right now um, so find somewhere where you can afford to buy and buy it now um, and uh, commit to it for for a length of time don't overcommit yourself and uh, the market will take care of itself before our second story, we're going to look at housing affordability from a slightly different angle. First home buyer scheme delivering results. About one in three first home buyers who purchased a property in the 2023-24 financial year used the federal government's home guarantee scheme, according to a new report from Housing Australia. The home guarantee scheme lets eligible first home buyers and previous buyers who haven't owned a home for at least 10 years enter the market with just a 5% deposit without having to pay LMI. However, income caps and property price caps apply. Now, looking at all the people who used the scheme last financial year, for single participants who lived in capital cities, their median income was 85,000, while their median purchase price was 482,000. And for joint applicants in the capital cities, their median income was a combined 134,000, while their median purchase price was 624,000. Owen, clearly a lot of first home buyers are using the federal government's assistance scheme. I'm just wondering though, do you think the government should be giving assistance to first home buyers? Um, the, an the answer is, you know, well, to answer your question, it's uh, yes. Uh, it, I, I think it's good for the government to help first home buyers. Um, whether they should be right now or not is is um, is is a different matter. Um, it's um, you know, it, it's just like wanting to eat ice cream three times a day. I I want as much assistance as I as I can get to be able to you know, buy a home and, and get it. And I think everyone, uh, I think it's nice for everyone to get that assistance. Um, uh, when I first bought, bought my first home, I did get any assistance and uh, I had to scrimp and save and um, to get the 6% deposit um, to be able to get into it. But that's, um, um, so if, if people can get government assistance to get into their first home, then uh, I think that's a great thing. Um, it, if it's pushing more demand into a market where we've got an undersupply already right now, then 
in the bigger picture from a macro point of view um no i I don't think it's a it's a it's a great thing right now Mm, well just following on from that we've spoken in previous episodes about federal and state government assistance schemes and we've mentioned that they generally appear to be flawed because they're trying to address affordability but they're doing it in a way that actually increases demand rather than increases supply and thereby actually worsens the problem i'm wondering owen if you were prime minister and you had to design a housing assistance scheme what would it look like in other words which people would be helped and how would they be helped good question nick it's um the in the first instance and it's not a short-term issue and and there's the political answer and then there's the um um uh, and then there's the 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 right answer um but the right answer is to be able to um go back to the days where we didn't need a government assistance um to be able to get into our first home and we didn't need all these um, programs to be able to get into our first home. Um, so it would be um, part of the issue is the tax system, um, mainly with um, stamp duty and land tax, um, which unfortunately is a a state based system. So being prime minister wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have a lot of control over that. Um, and so but if we could do something to be able to reform the um, property taxes in the country then that would go a long way to uh, helping um, the property market become a a lot more liquid so it made it easier for for people people to be able to buy and sell um, whenever they needed to without these huge um huge um barriers of entry um in the form of taxes uh, mainly stamp duty Mm. and um um and then there's the supply issue you know how do we control this supply issue and um and unfortunately that's at all levels of government um we need to put more supply into the market um and that comes down to uh, again mainly state as well as local governments who are controlling that um but there's also federal government land releases get, that can happen um and um uh, but but also a lot of redevelopment in in inner city areas and so on but uh and that's where the big hold up is to be able to generate more supply in the market Mm. And if you were Prime Minister, would you pass legislation saying that everyone had to eat ice cream three times a day? <laughs> Definitely not. It's not good for your health. Okay, well, I'm glad, I'm glad we've got your position on ice cream. And let's move along to our final story. Brokers originating about three quarters of new home loans. Mortgage broker market share has increased significantly over the past four years. Brokers originated 73.7% of all new home loans in the June 2024 quarter, according to data from Comparator, which was commissioned by the MFAA. And that compares to 57% in June 2020. So in four years, the share has increased by 16.7 percentage points. Clearly, Owen, a large majority of consumers now believe that brokers provide better service than banks. Why do you think consumers believe that? Um, because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh, you walk into a bank branch um, and you'll sit down with the 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 in branch lender, and um, uh, you'll ask them to to give you give you their their best offer um, and their best offer is only the products that uh, they can offer um, and so other than that you uh, I mean why wouldn't you go to a broker it, it's 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 that simple um, there there can be some benefits to to going directly to to the to a to a bank um, but for 
the majority of borrowers out there, um, the benefits of a broker way outweigh um, any benefits of going directly to a, a bank branch. Well, let me uh, kind of follow up on that one. If you're taking out a new home loan, what potential benefit could you have from going direct to lender? Well, as as far as I know, um, might not still be the case um, and might not be the case in, in, in all instances. Um, so the, here's my dis that's my disclaimer. Um, but, uh, but generally, uh, a bank branch will tell you, oh, I can get you approved quicker than any broker can. Mm. And it's just like, and um, so, um, yeah, that that's probably the only beneficial point I can, I can, I can say is is much better by going to a branch. So, it's. But if that is the case, then are banks, you know, loading themselves up, or to to be able to um, make it more difficult for brokers to be able to. Um, service their clients and, and if that's the case then yeah it's it's not really um, um, good for the for the general public um, and then there's the um, oh yes uh, the broker might not have been able to get you approved with us but I certainly can I have special powers um, and yes apparently banks in the at least in the past as far as I know not, not sure about now, um, but um, uh, certain bankers would have their own delegated underwriting authority um, or delegated lending authority. Um, they, they have these um, special acronyms um, where up to a certain amount, they can just sign it off, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it meets policy or not, whether, regardless of whether it services or not. Um, and that's where banks in the past have have um, been pulled up for, for these uh, lending practices um, that have been a bit adverse. And they go, oh, yes, we had a rogue employee. It's just like, so we fired him, him or her. Um, and it's just like, okay, but where's the accountability? You know, um, brokers nowadays can lose their license. They can, they can have all sorts of fines um, put on them but um, for, for doing the wrong thing. But banks, oh, no, no, well, yeah, it's rogue employee. It's just like, well, if they were not um, in a position to be able to do that in the first place, then they, they wouldn't have done it. Mm, well, I, I know that you used to be a broker and you're a big fan of brokers. When you need a loan, you go to a broker. I'm also a big fan of brokers. I've only ever used brokers to get my loans. I would never go direct to lender. Uh, it's funny, my my father, who's, who's bought and sold many properties in his life and is very, very experienced, I, I think just from habit, he's now in his 80s, uh, so he's not going to be taking out any more loans. But I remember when I, uh, this would have been about a decade ago, used a broker for the first time, he was really surprised and he couldn't understand and why wouldn't you go to a bank he was basically saying to me and I, I was trying yeah. to explain the value proposition to him dad like you know you, you go to the commonwealth bank or whoever they're only going to tell you about their own products you go to a broker you, you get access to a really large panel and he understood it on a theoretical level but i think emotionally he came from a certain generation it just made sense to go to the bank that's what you did but people today they they think differently thankfully because yes. as you say brokers offer much more value than banks and right now broker market share is about 74 percent how high do you think that broker market share will go um i i think um we'd be probably looking at um you know um probably probably 90 percent would be the, the the top end it's um and it might be a small crawl um to get there um it's um as you said yeah there's a um still an older generation that um um feels like no you go directly to the bank uh, to to the bank branch cut out the middleman you know why do I want a middleman in between um and um it's um and so that might take a while uh, but the the uh, 
there will always be some circumstances where loans need to be written um, by a branch and um, you'll you'll have people going to branches for, for that reason. So, yes, there'll be, uh, a, that'll be about 10% of cases, I think. Mm, it, it's interesting. As broker market share has kept increasing year after year, every now and then you see the banks trying to fight back and trying to... Uh, trying to get back some of that market share. And uh, they've tried everything. It seems like the only thing they haven't tried is offering free ice cream to people who get mortgages through bank branches. Maybe that'll be their next trick. Well, I think they go way beyond ice cream. They just um, throw chunks of money at people up front to, um, to, to, to change over. Um, and it just shows the desperation of... of um, of um, these big banks uh, when they're offering thousands of dollars in cash up front uh, for people to to move across. They're just desperate to maintain um, their um, market share. Well, thank you as always, Owen. Always love these charts. Thank you. And um, yes, you always bring the best stories. Um, and uh, looking forward to... Um, See what stories you bring next week. Until then. Thanks, Nick.